Are you applying to college soon and wondering what the coalition application is or what the difference between the coalition application and the common application is? If so, stay tuned because today I'm gonna to talk about the coalition application, the common application, and the similarities and differences between these. If you're wondering who I am, my name's Brooke. I've been teaching SAT and ACT prep for over a decade and a half. I've also worked as an independent college consultant. In particular, I do a lot of work with essay coaching with students. If you wanna check out all the awesome tips that we have for test prep, definitely head over to supertutortv.com. We have the best SAT prep course ever and the best ACT prep course ever. Each has over 100 hours of video tutoring with me where I will show you all the secrets that help me coach at least one student on each test to a perfect score of 1600 or 36 overall. So go check out those tips. We also have two books on the ACT math section. If you're taking the ACT, check those out at amazon.com and Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can follow us for free and also free our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. And we'll send you a note every once in a while to tell you what fun videos we have coming out for free on YouTube and other tips and information. So sign up, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. It's fun, cool. Coalition application, common application, what are these things? We'll first do a really quick just heads up for anybody who really has no idea. Both of these are applications that many colleges use to help students apply to college. So this is where you fill out your application. The common application is 40 years old, so it's been around for a long time. At this point, 891 colleges accept the common app. That number will probably go up over time. Um, it's November 2019 while I'm making this video. Right now, the coalition application is only four years old, so it's much younger. It has about 140 schools that accept it at this point in time, and I'm sure that number will grow. But as you can see, there's, there's a huge difference in the number of schools that one accepts versus the other, which tends to mean most students are using the Common App, but the coalition is on the rise. And in this video, I'll talk about some reasons why you might want to apply on the coalition. And then there's, of course, people who do both as well. In terms of the coalition, why did they even start the coalition if the common application already existed and that was how everybody was applying to schools? Well, it was created with this goal to, quote, improve the college application process for all students, particularly those from historically underrepresented groups. So it has a little bit more of a mission than the common application does. That doesn't mean that you have to be an underrepresented group in order to use the coalition application. Anyone can use the coalition application. For some colleges, you have to use the coalition application, which some of you may have come across, and now you're like ticked because you had your common app going, and now you're like, darn it, I'm applying to the University of Washington. And now I have to do the coalition application, right? The idea behind the coalition application was we can create this sort of wonderful online place, space, where students can collaborate with their mentors and the people who are providing them guidance in this sort of college process, right? That could be parents, it could be your basketball coach, it could be, you know, someone in your community who's encouraging you. Whoever it is, you can kind of invite them to this space and they can see sort of the things that you have going on and help you through this process, right? And they also wanted to encourage students to start thinking about college from a young age. So they want people to sign up when you're freshmen, when you're sophomores. That's the goal of coalition, to get you to sign up early, to start to think about this process early so that you're better equipped. Even if you're from a background that doesn't necessarily, you know, live and breathe college admissions all the time. The other thing about the coalition application is that they have sort of a bar for being a member school. Not just any college or university can sign up and join the coalition application. You have to offer a low to no debt ratio for students who attend, or you have to offer low in-state tuition, or you have to meet 100% of students' demonstrated financial need, or have what they call responsible financial aid packages. So whatever that amounts to, and I won't get into the details of what that means, at the end of the day, what it amounts to is if you can't pay for college or don't think you can pay for all of college, these colleges are going to be probably handing you a bigger olive leaf or branch or whatever you call it, than some other universities that may not make the list. So that's like the biggest thing that's different, but there's some other differences and I'm gonna go through kind of some of those because I think the other differences actually will dictate for some of you whether you're gonna do one or the other. The first thing that I'm gonna say is not every school is on Coalition and not every school is on Common App. So obviously with 891 schools, Common App's definitely got way more college options on it. However, there are some notable schools that are not on the Common App at all. And if you happen to be applying to these and all the other schools you're applying to happen to also be 
on the coalition app, you may be able to get away with just doing the coalition app and that could save you some time. So those schools that are not on the Common App but are on the coalition app, University of Texas, University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana, and Clemson University are not on the Common App but they are on the coalition app. A few other schools actually require the coalition app. Not only are they not on the Common App, but you have to do the coalition, no choice. And those schools right now are University of Washington, University of Maryland, and Virginia Tech. This is accurate as of November 2019, by the way, and this information does change pretty rapidly. For instance, last year, University of Florida only accepted coalition. Now they accept coalition and common applications. And again, we know some schools don't accept either of these applications, right? MIT, University of California, Georgetown, there are definitely some schools out there that just say, you have to do our proprietary application. We're not taking anyone else's. And of course, there are also some schools that they give you options. You can do Coalition, you can do Common App, or you can do our own application that's hosted on our server and you can kind of pick and do whatever you want, right? So. Lots of options and it kind of varies school by school, but that's kind of the biggest reason why you should do the coalition application if you're applying to one of those six schools. Okay, next kind of point of difference is essays. Both of them have different essay prompts. And as you can see, they're pretty similar. And at the end of the day, both of them have a, an essay topic of your choosing at the end. So there is really no reason to choose one application over the other because you like a prompt. There is kind of a bigger difference and that is word length. And on the Coalition app, they recommend that you write 500 to 550 words. However, this is not a hard line. You can put 650 words or more even in that box and it will probably fit. On the Common app though, you have a 650 word limit. That means if you write more than 650 words, it will not paste in. The box will cut you off. So the fact that it's not strict, I think is notable because you're applying to a school that accepts both applications and it's just a pain in the neck for you to refill everything out. You know, you could submit the 650 word version in the coalition, and for most schools, it's probably not a huge deal. Do I know how colleges are going to treat it if you turn in a 650 word essay on the coalition application when it says 550 is the recommended amount? I don't know. I don't know what individual school policies are. I usually advise students to try to stick to recommendations when there is a recommendation, unless your essay is really diehard amazing. But yeah, essay length, it's a difference. Take note. Other differences and similarities. Activities. Both of these applications have an activity section where you can fill out information about your activities. The coalition application requires you to talk about at least two activities. And then it also wants you to expand on more activities if you have them up to eight. The common application, however, has 10 activity slots which you can fill in or you can say, no, I don't have any activities. Not that I would recommend saying that if you're applying to a competitive school, but you know, it is what it is. All right, next one, fee waivers. So again, as I mentioned earlier, the coalition application is really looking out for those underrepresented groups. And part of that underrepresented group is people who may not have as many financial resources. And those students are much more likely to qualify for a fee waiver. Though both applications offer fee waivers to a variety of students, there are more categories that will qualify you for a fee waiver, I believe, on the coalition application. I've also heard that it's a little bit easier to get the fee waiver on the coalition application because the common application requires your counselor to fill out a form, so it's a little more legwork for your school counselor. And so some students find that kind of annoying and they found the coalition just easier to work with on a fee waiver kind of level. Next difference is the number of schools you can apply to. The common application cuts you off at 20. That means you can only apply to 20 schools in a common application in any given year. The coalition application has no such boundary. So even with fee waivers, you can apply to an unlimited number of schools. Some other notes in terms of integrations. This is also a place where there's a little bit of difference. The common application integrates with a software called Naviance, which many high schools use to organize your grades and your teacher recommendations. So if your high school happens to use Naviance, there are many a school counselors that are very anti-coalition because they find it annoying because it doesn't integrate with Naviance very well. So it's easier for school counselors who are on Naviance apparently to send all of your grades and all of your recommendation letters and all that good stuff to the college if they are on the Common App versus on the Coalition App. The other integration that Coalition does have kind of an advantage on is SAT integration. They've partnered with the college board so that you can actually send score reports from within your coalition application and you don't have to actually log in separately to the college board site. So that might be a little bit easier. At the end of the day though, a lot of schools now are letting students self-report their SAT scores. So what that means is you just put the number that you got in the date of the test 
And as long as you're not lying, you can get into school. And then after you get in, you send the official score report to verify. And as long as they match, you still got in. And if they don't match, you could get kicked out of the class. So don't lie. A few more items of note. One is for procrastinators. If you are a major mucho procrastinator, you might be interested to know that the common application deadline is typically 11.59 local time to you. So that means if you live in Hawaii, you might like the common application better because you can turn it in at nearly midnight Hawaii time versus the coalition application is 11.59 Pacific time. So if you live in Hawaii, Pacific time is happening before your time zone. And so then your deadline moves up and that could kind of grill you. But for everyone else, like who lives on the East Coast or Central Time, if you're trying to fill out your common application essay and you're like two minutes late or something, well, heck, you can just head on over to coalition application and turn in your application there and it will still potentially be on time. One more difference that I wanna talk about is listing courses. So one of the reasons you might be like, why do these schools only accept coalition? And that might annoy you. And if so, one of the reasons that some of these schools have said that they only want to take the coalition application is that the coalition application forces you to fill in your entire academic schedule from your four years in high school, meaning every class and every grade that you got each semester, or each quarter or whatever your school divides things into and your GPA and all that good stuff. So you have to basically copy over your transcript into the form itself and that's required as part of coalition. And so some of the member schools have reported that that is the reason that they like coalition is that they wanted that feature. Now apparently Common App also has that feature but it's an optional feature and you're going to be told whether the school you're applying to requires it or not. So see healthy competition pushes one competitor to then change the way that they do things. But it used to be coalition was the only one that did that. So that's one of the reasons that they did that and you have to do it on coalition. And on Common App, like I said, most schools don't necessarily require that. They'll just take your transcript and upload it themselves. But some schools will require you to fill it in yourself as well. So I think that's about it in terms of comparison with the coalition application versus the common application. Obviously they have different interfaces. The other thing that I'll say is load time wise, I find the coalition application does take quite a while to load applications when you click on that button that says like open my you know Washington application or my Stanford application you have to sit there and wait for like three minutes before it opens or five minutes and so it's a little more buggy I mean obviously it's only four years old not 40 years old so they're probably still working out some kinks I hope you guys found this helpful and informative if so please give it a thumbs up good luck with your applications guys thanks for watching subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet and comment in the comments if you've noticed any other differences between them, if you guys have any other feedback, because you use these much more intensely than I do. I work with a lot of students who use these, but I'm not the one who has to sit there and fill in all the boxes. So if you have other feedback, let people know. I'm sure they'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.